we first discuss how to mine multi-level association rules. Multi-level association rules come down to a very natural setting. For example, to your boss, if you say, now I find milk and bread sold together, probably everybody thinks this is common sense. But if you find 2% milk with a brand Dairyland sold together with Wonder Wheat Bread, probably it becomes something more interesting. But if you see this Dairyland 2% milk actually sitting in a hierarchy, the top level could be milk, then go down to 2% milk, then go down to Dairyland 2% milk. So it is interesting to mine multi-level association rule patterns. Then the interesting thing becomes how to set a minimum support threshold. One way is we set up a uniform minimum support threshold across all the levels. But there's one problem. If you set it very high because they naturally have lower support, the low level patterns will not show up. But if you set very low, the high level you get too many uninteresting patterns because everything may show up. So a reasonable way is set level reduced minimum support. That means items at a higher level, you use higher level you know, minimum support like 5%. When you go down to the lower level, you may adopt lower level minimum support like 1%. To that extent, the skim milk will show up at a higher level some you know, peanuts or some other things may not show up if they are not interesting, they are not frequent at all. So then the problem is, if we set a multi-level minimum support thresholds associated with different levels, then how can we use one scan in one shot? We mine all the different levels. The interesting thing could be we can use shared multi-level mining. We can use the lowest minimum support to let the high level pass down to the low level. But in the meantime, when we analyze rules, when we analyze patterns, we can figure out the higher level rules using higher level support threshold. So another problem for mining multi-level association rules is the redundancy. Because the rules may have some hidden relationships. For example, suppose 2% mirror sold is about one quarter of total milk sold in gallons. Then, if you see these two rules, one and two, the rule one says milk implies wheat bread with the support 8% confidence 70%. But rule two actually dropped down a little down to from milk to 2% milk. In the meantime, the support also dropped down correspondingly, for example, from 8% to 2%. In that case, you probably can say, the rule two is essentially redundant because we can derive such things from rule one. Okay? That means if the rule can be derived from the higher level rules, the lower level rules are redundant, we should remove them. Another interesting thing is different kinds of items inherently may need different support thresholds. For example, you go to Walmart, you may see diamond watch or some expensive things they are more valuable, but they sold maybe less frequent. But milk and bread probably sold very frequent. So if we set minimum support for all kinds of items using the same minimum support threshold, then the valuable items may be easily figured out. So to that extent, it is necessary to have customized minimum support setting for different kinds of items. Okay. Instead of taking each item to try to decide their minimum support, we can use group-based, individualized minimum support. For example, we can group diamond watch or some expensive things, set up lower minimum support, take milk and bread, those frequent things, set up higher minimum support threshold. Then the question becomes how to mine such patterns efficiently. Actually, if we take our previous study, the scalable pattern mining methods, we can easily extend them by adding different minimum support threshold. I would not discuss the detail, but I think it could be a good exercise.